welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with fabulous fibs and terrifying truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian who says he looks like a cross between Miss Piggy and Boris Johnson. <laughs> so, part puppet with the face of a pig and part Miss Piggy. It's Rob Beckett. <laughs> And a presenter of Newsnight who attended an all-girls school that she describes as being a bit like St Trinian's. I say forget the quiz, let's talk about that. It's <laughs> Kirsty Walk. <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, a dancer who's been in the business for 40 years. Quite an achievement, considering he says he's 37. <laughs> it's Bruno Tonioli. <laughs> Guard comedian and broadcaster who redefines cool. Cool now means having a beard and living in Norwich. It's Adam <laughs> Buxton. <laughs> and so we begin with round one. It's home truths, where our panelists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Bruno Tonioli, you are first up tonight. I once caused a fire in a hotel while making pasta sauce for Bananarama. <laughs> David's team. Bananarama, I should say, David, are a popular pop group <laughs> uh, from the 1980s all-girl three-piece band. Yeah, right. I should point out, girls are... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the key question here, Bruno, is, yeah. is why were you making pasta sauce in a hotel for Bananarama? Because I'm Italian and, you know, people like my pasta. Who's your favourite member of Bananarama? Uh, they're all my favourite. They're all friends. <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> if he's lying, he's good. <laughs> One of good. them is married to Andrew Ridgely. What, really? Wasn't one of them married to the yeah. Eurythmics bloke? Yeah. Dave, Dave Stewart. Stewart. Yes, no, Dave you're Stewart. Thinking yeah. of That's them. Annie Lennox. No, no. No, no Annie no, Lennox no, wasn't no. in Banana Rama. <laughs> so difficult working with such music experts. Music <laughs> <laughs> Back, anyway, back, back to story. Was when okay. was this? When was it? Uh, it was in the 80s. The 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> right. But wait a minute, you were just... You, I you was were very young. I, were you very I was extremely young. I was practically a fetus. And why were you with Banana Ron? I was, uh, I was uh, shooting a video. I was shooting a video. Were you dancing? You, you were directing it? What were you Choreographing doing? a video. You were choreographing the vi the a Banana Rama video. Yeah. yeah. I right. have to say, oh, having I'm... seen yeah. Banana Rama videos, I don't think there's <laughs> an over reliance on choreography. <laughs> <laughs> you point at your hand like this. You go like that. <laughs> you go up in the air. You come down. <laughs> you go to that side. <laughs> it's a now, where is the kitchen and my saucepan? <laughs> so, anyway, I was working with a lot of pop groups at the time. Mm -hmm. Bananarama was one of my clients, and I was in Los Angeles shooting a video. And after we finished filming, I went to the hotel. They asked me to cook a pasta for them. Is so I was... Is cooking dinner at the end of the day part of the choreographer's job description? Well, they, they, he... Because <laughs> some hotels, I believe, at the sort of at the very top end, will actually provide a food-making service <laughs> to, for you. And, in fact, I've heard it's even frowned upon if you attempt to cook your own meal ah. on the premises. <laughs> ah. But there are some hotels, and rock kitchens. and roll hotels, yeah. which actually have villas, so you don't go through the... where everybody goes through. So how did the fire...? You say there was a conflict. Well, uh, the, the, what happened is that I kind of started uh, this tomato sauce, mm. and I said uh, to Sarah, I need to get some extra ingredients, so you just yeah. watch the onions. Yeah, I know. Make sure that once they become golden, yeah. you remove the pan from the stove, and wait for me to come back to finish. Very clear instructions. Very clear. Very it's very clear. simple. An idiot could follow uh, those yeah, instructions. Yeah, yeah. So oh. after a day of trying to choreograph Banana yeah, Rama, you knew they couldn't follow any instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I come back and there is like fire ranging, smoke everywhere. What the hell is going on here? Basically, she washed her hair and the kitchen was on fire. Everything was black. I mean, the whole thing was a terrible disaster. Oh. Was banana armor all right? Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? That's... My pasta was ruined. <laughs> Did the fire brigade come? 
Yes. Was that nice? Yeah. <laughs> was it nice, did you say, Rob? Was it nice? Very odd question. I know, was it nice? Yes. How was the fire engine? Uh, was it nice? <laughs> was it... <laughs> Because in America, they're always very nice. How are you doing, sir? Yeah. Is this your villa? Is it burned down to the yeah. ground? Yeah. Well done. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're lovely. I love it. Good job. Yeah, I like it. I like it. They're so, you know, they're so nice. Everything in America is lovely. It's good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> um, okay. David, what are you thinking? What do you think? I'm thinking it's a lie. Really? Yeah. I think he's kind of telling the truth because it's so ridiculous. I think we're going to say true. I think it's true. OK. Bruno Tognoli, was it true or was it a lie? It was the truth. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yes, it's true. Bruno did cause a fire in a hotel when making pasta sauce for Banana Rama. Adam, you're next. If my wife and I are having a row, to help us think more rationally, we go into separate rooms and continue the argument over Skype. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should say, before we kick off here, if anybody in Wales is watching, Skype is a... Um, <laughs> it's a sort of telephone call with pictures. <laughs> Adam, where did this idea come from? Uh, well, it first started when we were not in the same physical space. Well, like, we weren't in the same house. We were... Uh, on having... Skype already? We were on Skype. We were in different countries. Yeah. And we were having quite a uh, difficult conversation that I was anticipating was going to get out of hand. And I was surprised <laughs> by the fact that Skype enabled us to stay relatively calm. What was the difficult situation? I was going to ask Did he go along the lines of, <laughs> what's that person doing in the background? <laughs> 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 so, what was the last yeah. row you had that required Skype's intervention? Uh, well, I mean, this is kind of personal. <laughs> that you brought it up, mate. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> it was sparked off by uh, drawers being left open. <gasps> oh! I mean, I was uh, very irritated because it was something that I'd pointed out a number of times. Oh, yeah. And I was disappointed to see that... Uh, disappointed. The conversation... Disappointed. Classic. Oh. Classic. Oh, yeah. I'm not angry, I'm, I'm disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> disappointed. So I was all... very disappointed to see that the uh, tip that I had given about keeping the drawers closed, <laughs> especially the ones at a low level, so I don't bark my shins. <laughs> Is that really unreasonable? I was disappointed to see that that chat hadn't been action. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. So the, how, do you, how do you go from arguing, yeah. which one of you will then say, OK, whoa, 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 time out. Um, <laughs> let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's... I mean, that's enough to start a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> OK, time it. Right, that's it! <laughs> so I did that with my wife when we were having an hour ago. Make us a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't help. Just a, just a tip for you. So how, do, how do you... How do, who makes that decision? How does it move uh, on to the Skype stage? Yeah, I'm, I'm the one who makes the decision. Because I just... Originally, I thought that it would be a sort of funny way of diffusing some tension. Is this a system you could see yourself implementing, David? No. You and Mrs Mitchell, perhaps, no. if, you, if tempers are ever heaven forbid, raised? Well, I think it wouldn't work for us because I think we find computers more annoying than each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, what are you thinking? Has Adam been telling the truth? Um, what do you think, Kirsty? Um, I think it's really, really possible. What do you think? He does like computers, doesn't he? Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one la last question. Come on, then. Oh, right. The first time you had, you know, you had the, the row in real life when you had in the back of your mind that maybe if you could get onto Skype, the row would be diffused. <laughs> On was that not, to your wife, an incredibly annoying suggestion? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> I would have thought that, 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 that the de-escalating effects of Skype would be overwhelmed by the escalating effect oh, of God, like, suggesting like Skype. Uh, <laughs> it's heavy going, isn't it? It is it, heavy it, going. It, it's yeah. very right heavy going, that one. <laughs> eight, eight, years, eight years of this. Get to the point! <laughs> get, get to the point is not an exhortation you can fairly make during a parlour game. <laughs> I don't there is no point. This is a pointless exercise. We are whiling away our finite time
time before the grave. <laughs> Truth or lie? I, I think it's the truth. I think, and I think it's so weird it's true. OK, my team says true. I'm certainly not sure either way, so I couldn't overrule them. So you it's know, true. So we're saying, saying it's true. You're saying true, right. OK, yeah. OK. Adam Buxton, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Uh, Skype conducted arguments. That is a lie. Oh, oh brilliant! Very good. Yes, it was a lie all along. Uh, Adam and his wife don't go into separate rooms to argue over Skype. OK, our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Hayden. <laughs> Adam, what is Hayden to you? Uh, this is Hayden. He is the human statue that I once had to give a massage to because he got cramp in his leg. <laughs> Bruno, <laughs> perhaps you could explain how you know Hayden. This is Hayden. When I choreographed a dance routine <laughs> for a troupe of JCB diggers, he drove digger number three. <laughs> And finally, Lee, what's your relationship with Hayden? This is Hayden. He used to be the lead singer of Banana Rama. <laughs> <laughs> Until a fire tragically burnt off his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Lee, yes. what is your relationship with Hayden? This is Hayden. He once stopped a cow charging at me <laughs> by throwing... Oh, an this one's true! <laughs> Because this one's true. <laughs> Do you know what? Now you're starting to think maybe the banana arm was true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will continue. This is Lee, this... what is your relationship <laughs> with Hayden? This is Hayden. He once stopped a cow charging at me by throwing an apple pie in its face. <laughs> there we are. Okay. There we are. <laughs> Adam's stiff statue, Bruno's dancing digger driver, or Lee's. Bovine Basher. David's team, where would you like to begin? Um, well, Adam, what was the situation in which you had to give a human statue a massage? Uh, Why was his cramp your problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were in London, me and my family, my three young children and my beautiful wife, and we were on the South Bank, uh, right next to the London Eye, mm -hmm. and we saw Hayden there. He was dressed as a golden robot man. <laughs> Uh, my daughter wanted to pose for a photograph with him because she thought he was adorable looking. She loves gold, anything gold. And um, in the middle of the photograph, he, he, he sort of started making pained robot noises. How did you become certain enough that a massage of an intimate part I of said, his body would be I gratefully said, received? I just asked. I said, uh, would you like me to rub your calf? Is that funny enough? That's interesting, cos that's the exact phrase I used when the cow charged it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Were there many people there? Cos quite often Not, no, a, crowd, no. a crowd gathers around someone like no, this. No, it was rainy morning. A uh, cold, rainy morning. When it was a rainy morning, why was you walking around London with your family? It sounds like a bit of a. You know, sometimes, morning. I don't know if this is true or not, you can leave the house and it's not raining, then it starts raining. Yeah. By the rumours yeah. I've heard. But what I normally do is go in like a coffee shop, not wander around looking at robots. Yeah, in the uh, rain. what I would say to you, Rob, you is do you have children? children? <laughs> 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 it's not often a five year old says, Cafe Nero, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have children, Rob? No children, no. no. So you live a life of unalloyed pleasure and hedonism, not having yeah. to think for one second about another living person. If you have children, it is not uncommon to trudge around the South Bank in the pouring <laughs> rain with the drudgery of your life pressing down on you and these voices coming at you from every damn side. You don't know you're born. <laughs> And the fact that you stood still looking at this loser for <laughs> It's blessed relief <laughs> from listening to them giving this all the time. <laughs>
<laughs> right, David, uh, right. Th there's... Oh, who else would you like to quiz? Bruno. Yeah. Um, there was a, di a digger dance. A I... digger... Uh, uh, it was a dance routine in which we had many, many uh, like a group of diggers. And how many diggers? So, 20? I think it was, no, 12. And what was it for? It was for these fairs, you know, it, it, this kind of country fairs where they have uh -huh. all sorts of uh, products in relation to uh, farming. And what was so special about Hayden's digger? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, they're all the same, the diggers, but he was number three. <laughs> <laughs> but did he have to do a particularly difficult pirouette? They, they all have to do very, very difficult manoeuvres, because can you imagine, you know, they're huge, they're tons, mm. and they have things moving up, down, so everything was to music. What was the music? Choreogra it was a medley. Oh, I love, of, that. I love a that. medley. You love medley, don't yes. you? Oh, Andrew Lloyd Webber tune. Oh, oh my God. I've got <laughs> off it. Yeah, is it your favourite? <laughs> your favourite. Uh, right. Me? Lee. Um, yes. <laughs> a cow was charging at you and then... Hayden, Hayden had a pie. Saved you. Hayden had the apple pie and threw it in its face. So why was he carrying an apple pie? Good question. <laughs> um, because uh, we were going to a wedding. Oh, you knew him? Oh, I know Hayden, yeah. So yeah. you're on your way to we're a wedding with an apple pie. across a field with, with an, an apple, apple pie. pie. We're, we're in a car park. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to some sort of like country wedding. There's lots of marquees and things. Mm. And we've got to walk through quite a bit of land with lots of farmers' land around it. Uh, and there was a cow. Uh, that started approaching, and he was carrying, bizarrely, an apple pie. So it was a bring-your-own-food wedding? No, no, hey, <laughs> just cos we're northerners, don't be like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was, it was his children uh, are very picky eaters, and he knew that their chil the children wouldn't eat any of the fancy food at the wedding, and so he didn't want the stress of the child not eating and then getting the, fractious. Yeah, but why did the cow charge Cos cows are normally quite timid. Bulls charge. It started coming towards me, and, as a joke, I started sort of, like... Enticing it a little bit. Showing it a nipple. Yeah. <laughs> and the cow went, call that a nipple? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a look at it! <laughs> so you're with your family. You're, right? with, you're, with, you're not on your own, you're with your family. I'm, I'm with my family. I'm with, I'm with my wife and three children. C can I ask how... And I, like Rob, was weeping, going, why can't I be on my own for once? <laughs> <laughs> You're walking across the field. Yeah. The cow has what noticed you. The yeah. cow... Well, noticed me. He didn't go. <laughs> Lee Mack! <Man. laughs> That's Lee Mack! <laughs> Are you early? <laughs> to be fair on me, Lee, I did say noticed, not recognised. <laughs> the, cow, the cow sort of looked up, right? Yeah. And it was... Noticed you. Was it a Frisian belt of Galloway? I don't know what the temperature was like. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the cow... The cow... It was actually... It was one of those ones that looked like Mick Hucknall. <laughs> oh, the ginger what? one. Uh, ginger cow. Ginger cow. Oh, yeah. one. Yeah. You know what? You know the ones that look like Mick. Mick Hawk not wearing a Vikings helmet. Yeah. One of them. What? Uh, Highland. One of those. Highland cow. In Cumbria. Where were you? That was. I was. Believe it or not, it was actually uh, on the Isle of Mull. Okay. Now we're getting. Oh, now close. we're getting something. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. Getting we're on the Isle of Mull now, aren't we? You were dressed in a kilt. No, because I've got some self-respect. <laughs> So, so the cow noticed so, you starts coming out. I don't think the cow, cow was charging us in the sense of it's going to kill us, but it was walking very fast uh, towards us because I children, foolishly you, right? had picked up a load of grass so, and was sort of doing that. You waved the grass as a joke. I got the, I got the grass like that. It started getting a little bit out of hand because it started getting a bit of grass and then we sort of walked away a bit and then it walked very fast towards us. And he and I went like that and sort of threw it in the cow's face and the cow got a bit of a shock. <laughs> How far away from the cow was... Uh, was Hayden when he launched the pie? What was, I would, would, would say... Did he actually press it into the cow with his hand? No, no, yeah, I think he mixed it, it up. I think he mixed up this incident and something that happened with the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go... <laughs> and he did trip down slowly and the cow went. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hayden... so how far away were you when you... Uh, was I've... he when he threw the pie? It was all in a bit of a panic, but I would guess at somewhere in the region of sort of how far now I am from so, Hayden. So it's one so of those he, sort of... So he, did it go on the horns and all down its, uh, through its hair? To be honest with you, we were sort of facing the other way, going at speed. So... <laughs> I didn't say, kids, come back, see how it's landed! <laughs> so, um, David's team, is Hayden Adam's stiff statue, Bruno's dancing digger driver, or Lee's bovine basher? What do you think, Kirsten? I'm just not sure about the idea that he looks like a kind of guy that is a golden robot. Look at his golden robot head. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't... I, 
he, I don't think he's a robot. No, it doesn't show Lee in a good light because he's acted incredibly stupidly and then couldn't repair his own damage. Yeah, well, absolutely. He's he's, he's lured literally. A... D I didn't have children in danger. No, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Hang on. I'm not having danger. another one taken into care. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I did not. I, I simply said, look at the orange beast. You and waved yeah. a bit of. Oh, That's we were, I, I remember last series where you brought in a video of you making one of your children cry. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> yes. I think Bruno's. I think he looks like a guy who'd probably be very precise with a digger. <laughs> I'm siding on digger over robot, definitely. And don't know about the cow pie. Yeah, I think we're leaning towards Bruno's story. Being You're true. all thinking it's the digger. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Hayden, would you please reveal your true identity? My name's Hayden. I was digger number three in Bruno's <laughs> dance routine. Hayden is Bruno's dancing digger driver. Thank you very much, Hayden. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... <coughs> it is David. <clears throat> As a child, I was scared of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what, what age? Um... I think this will probably be when I was four, five, six, seven, <laughs> that sort of age. Four, when I was 4,567. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I was still in my infancy as a god. <laughs> what was it about the sun that you found frightening? Uh, it, it was uh, looking at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you just go out at night or something? You, you, you never went out during the day? No, I, di I did go out during the day, but I, I would uh, sort of obsessively keep my eyes towards the ground. Oh, right. The problem was that someone said, someone used the phrase, if you look at the sun, you will go blind. Funny enough, exactly the same advice for me as well, but it was page three of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so you would still go out, but you would, not, you would avoid it anyway. Yeah. And then, it. yeah, and then, you know, occasionally you sort of turn your head and the sun goes through your vision yeah. and it can create that slight, you know, when you blink, you can still see. After, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you and, thought that was burning And I thought, right, well, yeah, what's that? Is that the beginning of, of the, the, the great eternal darkness? Yeah. You know. You really had a happy childhood, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> we were all then on our rally grifters and you were thinking about the eternal darkness. <laughs> Did anything else scare you as a child? Oh, yes, yes, most things. <laughs> What else, Gurdjie? Oh. Well, I, the trouble is that some children are timorous and some children are reckless. Yeah, and so I'm Sagittarius. And in order... <laughs> <laughs> but in order to save the lives of reckless children, warnings are calibrated for their safety, which... the result of which is that the timorous live in a state of perpetual, perpetual terror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I needed to be told is, you know what, most days you won't die, it's fine. You know, <laughs> You know, not, you know, I wasn't ever going to tear across a three-lane motorway. Right. You know, the very existence of a three-lane motorway in the same postcode as me <laughs> made me not want to leave the house. <laughs> and, um, presumably you would wait for about three weeks before swimming after a meal. <laughs> oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and having an ice cream in the afternoon and then thinking, well, well I should probably not swim for the rest of the holiday. <laughs> And then someone says, when I was an adult, you don't have to wait at all. It's yeah. all a myth. You can swim and eat. Did you have... <laughs> While looking into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we thinking? Adam? I, I'm thinking true, true fact. I'm going true. So you're saying it's the truth? Yeah. Go on, we'll say it's true. You're going to say that it's true. OK. David, truth or lie? It is true. Oh. Oh. It's a whole human story. Yes, it's true. As a child, David was scared of the sun. Next. <coughs> it's Kirsty. Jeremy Paxman didn't talk to me for a week after he caught me drinking from his Snoopy mug. <laughs> <laughs> Lee. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm very ignorant. What's a Snoopy cut? Snoopy, a Snoopy, do you know who cut? Snoopy is? <laughs> Snoopy's a rapper and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a cartoon character, uh, a comic strip. Snoopy the dog. Snoopy the dog. Snoopy the dog. Charlie, Charlie Brown. Brown. Jeremy Brown. Paxma has a Snoopy... Cup. Mug. Mm. Mug, yeah. Cut, mug thing. Mug. And how did he come about finding out you'd had... Was there lipstick on the coffee cup? No, he caught me. He actually caught you? You were yeah. lips on cup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Well, yeah, so, picture the scene, right? 
I'm, I'm uh, Jeremy Paxman. No, no, cos you have to play him, otherwise you wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to say it, cos I wasn't there. <laughs> I, I'll be you, right? Huh? News, 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 news. <laughs> that's, that's you rehearsing. That's yeah. me. News, 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 news. news, news. news. Oh, right, I need a little break. News, uh, news. <laughs> Uh, news, 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 news. news. Highland Paxman. Cow, Highland Highland Cow, 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 Isle of Mull. Hang on, hang on, you're both doing you now. This <laughs> <is>. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do you. He, he's oh. doing you. I'm you and you. Right. He's doing you. I'm doing you. Are you? No. Just let's be very clear. I'm at my desk. Lee uh, is doing I'm, you. I'm you. You are doing Jeremy okay. Paxman. <laughs> you're, <laughs> right. you're at the desk. I'm rehearsing, so I'm saying news, 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 news. I want to go independent, but I'm not allowed to say it publicly. <laughs> I, 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 get, I, get my lips, I get my lips on the cup. Oh, or I might not want to go independent. No, no, it could no, go either no, way. I'm no, not no. going to say it. I, I get my cup. Stop. I get my cup. I'm left handed. I get. <laughs> So there you are. You're doing the drinky thing, and, and it's and it's got to your lips. The, the lip, uh, Paxman. What does Paxman say? Kirsty, you're not drinking out my Snoopy mug. So he said. He, he said you're not drinking out my Snoopy mug. No, What's he doing this for? What's it for? <laughs> you said you're not <laughs> drinking out my <laughs> Snoopy <laughs> mug, are you? And you're me. What, what, oh yeah, sorry. With him, you're yeah. me, Emily. And, you, and, you, and I've got sorry. my left hand. Left hand is, are, you, are you doing Paxman now? <laughs> no. Well, why so is you... he talking like that? I don't because understand. Because the microphone's why he broke. This. He's like, are you? It's a long way away. It's a big room. It's a long it's a way away. Are you drinking out of my cup? It's a small room. So <laughs> you've got the cup, and Paxton walks in, and then you say, I can't do you because I wasn't there. You have to now be you. So you said, I'm now Paxman. Oh, Kirsty, are you drinking from my snoot, whatever? And you said, <laughs> It's only a mug. What does it matter? And he said, It's my mug. And you said, OK, have your mug. And he said, Wash it first. Oh. <laughs> I've been through that conversation with a woman before. <laughs> so, uh, OK. <laughs> but then he didn't talk to you for a week. A week's a long time. What is it about Paxman? He wouldn't talk to you for a week. Who said that? that? That was in your... You did when you read it. You said that at the beginning. Yeah. You did. I think, I think we read the number. I, I think it was a fly. <laughs> who said that? Oh, no, who was it that said that? <laughs> Said it. <laughs> I suspect you're edging towards her telling a lie. I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. It's a lie. And do you know what? I believed her until the week mistake. She, she until the unravelling. <laughs> so you say it's a lie. <laughs> Kirsty, was it truth or was it a lie? Try. Oh. <laughs> oh, and that sound signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that Lee's team have won by three points to two. Yeah. But it's not just a team game, of course, and my individual liar of the week this week is Adam Buxton. Yes, Adam's got more flannel than the John Lewis bed and bath department. Good night. <laughs>